So how's everyone's day going so far? Uh, I don't know, I don't feel it. Come on, they're a little louder. Let me feel it. <laughs> All right, so I think we're ready to start now. All right, so my name is Mr. Ortiz, and I am a genius. Right? Not because of my IQ score, but because I have learned to think outside of the box. To understand my genius, you must first become a genius. And how do we do that? Okay, that's one way. What other way? Yeah. Science. Go to Harvard University. You gotta have a lot of money for that. All right. All right. So to understand my genius, you must first become a genius, right? And we need to we need to believe in ourselves in order to become a genius. So I want you to repeat. Please excuse the interruption. Would you please release Boy J.D. Soccer at this time? That's Boy J.D. Soccer. Thank you. That was rude. <laughs> so, we need to believe in ourselves. So I want you to repeat after me. I, I am, am a genius. A genius. Do you, feel, do you feel yourself getting smarter, more yes. confident? Yes. Try to say it one more time. I, I am, am a genius. A genius. Yes. Oh. Right on. All right. So now that we're all geniuses, we're going to build, we're going to imagine a time machine and travel back in time. Back to 2001. I was 16. And the internet was slower than the snail. And social media didn't exist, exist yet. Most people at this age called me Willy. Or they teased me by calling me Willy Wonka. <laughs> or Free Willy, like the whale. I don't know if you guys know Free Willy. It might be before your time. So my life, my life goals at 16, what do you think they were? No. I wasn't really about school. <laughs> I was into gaming. Oh, close. <laughs> I sure was a hot cheerleader. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, so my life goals at 16 were gaming and punk rock music. Right? What do you think? What do you think my favorite game was? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, I ain't that old. Tetris. Tetris. It was actually it was actually for PlayStation One, and it was Final Fantasy VII. Have you guys ever played Final Fantasy? Yeah. Uh, really? That's it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, they're my two fans over there. All right, so it was your typical awkward scene. I was misunderstood, always feeling judged, and totally weird. Who's weird here? Any any of you guys consider yourself weird? Because really, weird in my eyes is normal. <laughs> so for the normal kids, you guys are weird. I didn't have much of a social life, because in those times, Los Angeles was infested with gangs. And my mom, of course, she was overprotective. I played a ton of music to entertain my lonely mind. And Linkin Park had just released their first album. Oh. That's how young I am. Can you believe it? Life was great until my parents bought us our first computer. That's when things got interesting for me. Sorry. With my big brother's help, I learned to upgrade hardware components inside the computer, like changing the CPU to improve processing power, adding additional hard drives to increase storage, and swapping CD-ROMs for cd writers because back then, burning music was the thing you could do. That was like the coolest thing at that time. 
And then we moved on to software and understanding the basics of Microsoft Windows, the applications for Microsoft Windows, and of course, purging viruses, because that was extremely important. But I needed money to fund my expensive hobby. And so I found a job as a cashier uh, at a hamburger restaurant in Universal Studios City Walk, making minimum wage, which was six twenty-five an hour. I worked from 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. on the weekends. I was really bad at being cashier. I was actually really bad at counting money. And by the end of the, by the end of the night, I'd be missing money from my cashier box. And so by the second week, the assistant manager wanted to fire me. It, it sucked. I felt horrible. I actually felt really stupid. And then I got lucky. The store manager saw potential in me. He took me under his wing and taught me to work smarter and not harder. I worked my butt off for a year, and later I was promoted to a sorry. Later I was promoted to a shift leader and was considered the youngest manager in the company. At 17, how proud do you think I felt? Be proud. Very, right? I was feeling high and mighty at 17. I thought, this adult thing ain't so hard. I got a handle on this. Boy, was I wrong. At 17, I got my girlfriend Jackie pregnant. Ooh. Right, right, right. Yeah. Come on, give it up. Give it up. <laughs> I did not. And on February 2013, we had our first son, our only son, Jay. Hi. What an exciting moment it was to see my son be born. I thought, how cool would it be to have a, a son that's like a little brother? We can play games, jam out, help, maybe even party together. Right? Yeah. Hey, 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 no judgment. Sort of. Yeah, when I was a kid. Not really acknowledging that parenting was a lifetime commitment. But I was determined to succeed for my son. But at what cost? So word of advice, having a family is great and all, but you are only a teenager once. Enjoy it responsibility free. Hold off on kids till you are financially and emotionally stable. Because it takes a lot out of you, seriously. And raising a kid means sacrificing your own dreams to feed that, to feed that child. Or else who's gonna do it? Your parents? What do you guys think? No family. No? No, right? No. You created that child. That child is your responsibility for life. It's not like, hey mom, I don't want this, I don't want, I don't want my child anymore. Here, take him. He's being annoying. He's crying too much. Take him. I can't afford to, to feed him. Take him. I'm gonna go party. Nope. It doesn't work that way. And so my computer hobby was put on hold after Jay. I dropped out my junior year in high school to start working full time, making seven fifty an hour. That's a little over minimum wage at that time. Jackie and I grew frustrated because we were constantly having to move from my parents' house to her mom's house and vice versa because of major difference, differences between all of us. And then we were finally forced to rent our own apartment. So imagine this, at 17, I'm paying $600 a month for a one-bedroom apartment in downtown Los Angeles. Jay's mom, Jackie, well, she, she, just had, she just had Jay. So for three months, she stayed home and took care of Jay, which meant that I was the only one working 50 hours a week, making $7.50 an hour, trying to provide for my family, and Honestly, on, a, on a one minimum wage income, I don't know how we were able to survive, but we did. I don't know how we were able to eat, because we could barely afford groceries, but we did. 
it would get so bad at times that I would go sit in church and cry. I, I, I didn't know what else to do. I was, I was I would run out of, of options. I was so stressed out financially. I was a kid, raising a kid, trying to be an adult. I, I, I would just hope that our financial situation would get better. Because living a paycheck to paycheck really sucks. And so in 2005, at 20 years old, I became interested in furthering my technical education. I enrolled in a private for in a private for-profit college called Westwood College. And their bachelor's degree in computer network management was a three-year course, one year less than a traditional school. It took me six years. <laughs> I know. It was no fun, but I got through it. I know what you're thinking, right? How could I attend college without a high school diploma? Well, for $200, Westwood College referred you to an unaccredited high school to pass their version of a GED exam. It was fake, of course. I chose the easy way in, but I would pay dearly for this later in life. But hey, it got me into college, right? The word of advice, do as much research as possible on the college you want to attend. Make sure, you ch make sure to check accreditation, age, age of school, and financial status. And folks, please don't be like me. Shop around for different schools before committing. Don't get screwed. Because school loans, will we'll follow you the rest of your life if you don't pay those off. It messes with your credit, it messes with you buying a house, it messes with you buying a car. So really think about the program you're going to join if, and if you can afford it. Better yet, get a scholarship, get a scholarship. Have someone else pay for it. Don't pay for your own education. Become smarter, be a genius. Don't spend your own money. So, back to my story. Westwood College is now bankrupt. My degree is worthless. I have a bunch of students, a bunch of student loans that I need to pay off, and I'm stuck with a fake GED. But you know what? At least I have an education. At 20, I also started my career in IT, short for information technology. I went from working at a hamburger restaurant as a shift leader to delivering packages for a printing company, making $8 an hour. I noticed the company had an IT department, and with the help of my big brother, because he also worked at the same company, I got to know the head of the IT department there. And three months later, I was transferred and given a system administrator title. Still making $8 an hour, as a system administrator, I oversaw and maintained the network, the computer servers, and their phone system. I had minimal supervision and was free to apply what I learned at school at work. And I gained a ton of work experience that also helped me with my studies. It was pretty awesome. Sadly, my position as a system administrator was short-lived. A year later, I quit because my manager also wanted me to continue being a delivery driver and a janitor. He told me that if the president asked him to wash toilets, he would do it. And he expected the same loyalty for me. Well, I'm sorry, but I felt it was unfair for me to work so many positions making $8 an hour. Especially because part of, part of the work had nothing to do with my degree. So with enough work experience under my belt, I felt confident enough that I could get a, that I could get a better paying job. Do 
doing less work, and that focused solely on my career field. In 2006, at 21 years old, I interviewed for a bank in downtown Los Angeles, and two weeks later, I got the job working as a desktop support mission, making $18 an hour. All right? Are you guys gonna clap for me or what? <laughs> It gets better though. As a desktop support technician, I was in charge of answering the phone and supporting our users with common desktop errors. That's all I did for eight hours, five days out of the week. Got on the phone, talked to these people that forgot their passwords every Monday, couldn't figure out that their monitor was unplugged, couldn't figure out where the power button you know, easy things like that, I support it. And so, a year later, guess what I did? I quit, yeah, because I got bored out of my mind working there, and I thought I could do better. And I knew I could do better. I was smart, I was pretty good at computers, so I moved on. And in 2007, I jumped jobs. By this point, Jackie and I, Jay's mom, I had divorced, and I had earned my first DUI charge. Do you guys know what a DUI is? Yeah. What is it? Let's hear it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I hope you guys don't do this, right? No. Oh, come on, you guys did not convince me at all. <laughs> all right. So, I was driving under the influence after clubbing, I got caught by the police. It was a very expensive fine. <laughs> but I still did not learn my lesson. I kept doing my thing. I was young, making good money. You know, I'm gonna do my thing. Anyways, there's a flight that's trying to attack me. Anyways, at 22, I interviewed with an online legal firm. Let's call this company legal.xyz. For a desktop support position. The company was located in the heart of Hollywood, California. I was so nervous. I really wanted, like, I really, really wanted this job. I prayed day and night, and luckily, the guy that interviewed me was from the same country my parents are from. So then we quickly became friends. And by the way, my parents are from El Salvador. They're not Mexicans, even though I look Mexican. We all look Mexican, so we're for different oh, countries. <laughs> uh, so he was from the same country my parents were from, and we quickly became friends. In the interview process, he asked me about three technical questions, and the rest were personal. I knew I had the job. And then he also told me when I got hired on, because I had to write my phone number, and my, my phone number had a seven in it, but I don't write my sevens like a normal seven. I write it with a, a little line across. So he's like, you know, I noticed that seven, and that was a deal breaker for me. He's like, you're different. There's something different about you. And there was. He didn't know that I was here. So quickly, oh, sorry, you're right. A few days later, I was hired on making $50,000 a year. Salary with medical benefits and a retirement plan. You get a mansion? No, can I get $50,000? Yeah. <laughs> Education. <laughs> what would you get? Let's hear it. Meaningless microtransactions? <laughs> Meaningless. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You'd pay for half of your college. Right on. That's a good one. That's smart. 
Anyone else? Well, you know what I would do with $50,000? I would buy a really cool gaming computer with all the neon lights and make it look all fancy so whenever my geeky friends came over, I'd be like, yeah, that's mine. You ain't got that. <laughs> uh, anyways, buy a computer. I'd buy a computer. I'd buy a bunch of games, all the new games that were out, because you know, I was a big gamer. And then, since I was 22, I was, I was able to drink, so I went out and partied a lot and drank a bunch of beer and alcohol. I mean, it was fun. I had never experienced this. I had never experienced going out, partying with a bunch of friends because my mom was so overprotective of me that I couldn't do these things. That, and I had a kid at 17, so I couldn't experience anything like that as a teenager. So at 22, with all the money in the world, I, you know, I was like, perfect. Party. So, word of advice, listen to Ben Parker from Spider-Man when he says, with great power comes great responsibility. It'll save you so much trouble and money. Trust me. I'm a genius. I worked at legal.xyz for seven years. And let me tell you what I learned from that experience. I learned that the only person that knows you best is who? Yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Someone's mom. What? what do you think? Who do you think knows you best? Uh, my mom. Your mom? Yeah. Is that it? Oh, no, my mom. And your mom again? She said no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you who knows you best. Yourself. Nobody knows you like yourself, right? Your mom knows you, but she don't know the things that you'd be doing behind her back. <laughs> Only you know that. So, see, I didn't get mixed up with the wrong, with the wrong crowd as a teenager. I got mixed in with the right crowd as an adult. Oh, yeah. We were all extremely talented at what we grew. If you are a baby boy and you are on a soccer team, you don't get out here about two minutes about All right, well, thank you for that message. Um, so my coworkers were awesome. They were one of a kind, and we were all extremely talented at what we did. And we learned a lot from each other. Most of my leadership skills came from the folks at Legal.xyz. But there was one flaw in our team and in our personality, personality and in our character. And what do you think that was? Mm. Yes. Responsibility, yeah, we hated responsibility. And so we went out every night and drank. And then it went from every night drinking to every lunch drinking. We went out for lunch to drink, and then that would carry over till 6 p.m., and then our second win would kick in, and then we wouldn't stop partying until 3, 4 in the morning. And then I had to be back at work at 9. Hung over like crazy. And so in 2011, at the age of 26, I was promoted to a desktop engineer position, and I got a raise. Guess how much I was making now? Uh, a year. 65. 65, you're so good. Girl, like high five, come here, give me high five. There you go. <laughs> I was making $65,000 a year. Whoop, whoop. I was on top of the world. And then, guess what happened? It all came crashing down. Like, 
crazy, horribly. It all happened so fast, and in the blink of an eye, yes, you are. I, I, I had become, I had become an alcoholic. I became a legit addict. I developed a drinking problem, and I lost focus Sorry. of my priorities, my responsibilities. But worst of all, my son. The addiction consumed my soul. I couldn't stop partying. I couldn't stop drinking. I was abusing drugs. I lost control of the demon inside me, and it fueled my addiction. It gave me the power to sleep for two hours and party all over again. I began to neglect my son, Jay. I became selfish. So when his mom, Jackie, asked if her and Jake could move to Arizona in search of new beginnings, I quickly agreed because I knew he'd be better off away from the environment that I was creating. But you want to know what the real reason was? It's because I wanted to live responsibility free. So I gave up my responsibility to party. I wanted to experience what I had what I had missed as a teenager. So when Jay moved to Arizona with his mom, my situation went from a hot mess to this man's a train wreck. Like literally a train wreck. I became depressed. I knew what I had done was wrong, but I couldn't help it. Partying was so much fun. I justified it by telling myself I'd been career-minded since I was 16. Look at all the money I made. I've worked so hard to achieve where I'm at now. I just wanted to have a little fun. But look at me now. I'm an addict. I'm the kind of dad that chose to drink and party or we're taking care of his son. But hey, at least I was at least I was living it up and doing my thing, right? Well let me tell you something. Karma is a you know what. And word of advice, don't drink and drive. Like ever. You can injure yourself. You can injure your neighbor's dog. Uh, right. Poor dog. I'm a big animal lover. Don't be hurting them dogs. Yeah, I know. It's not. You can even injure a beautiful family walking down the street, minding their own business, until you come along, all prey, acting like you're in GTA, and then kill the poor family. Like, really? But in all seriousness, please be mindful of your consequences. Lives are lost every day because of drunk drivers. And that leads me to my second arrest. In December of 2013, guess what I was arrested for? A DUI, once again. Ah, no, I didn't hit a dog. I think I hit a bird one time and that thing went it exploded. <laughs> okay, I think I'm supposed to turn the volume up, but I don't know how. So I'm just going to speak louder. So I, I got a DUI. I got a DUI again. It was my second DUI, and I thought, "Way to go, Willy Wonka, and the drinking factory." Whatever, no love. I spent three days in jail, and I met some interesting people in there. Some were nice, others were pretty intimidating. And jailhouse rules? Talk about stricter than your parents. If you don't follow their rules, or clean up after yourself, or wipe the sink squeaky clean, where there's no water drop, 
and you better make sure you air dry it, because or else you can expect to get cornered by four guys in the middle of the night in the darkest area of the room where there's no cameras and nobody can save you. That was my experience. And it totally sucked being in there. So don't ever go to jail. But if you do, okay, it happens to everyone, it's okay, it's nothing to be ashamed about. Remember that there is always a lesson to be learned in your experiences. And then laugh about it hysterically. Because you'll feel better, I promise. So believe it or not, as an addict, this was my rock bottoms. I finally hit the lowest points in my life, and all I can think is, man, where did things go, where did everything go all wrong? I totally, I totally felt like I was in, in that show, Interventions. Have you guys ever watched Interventions? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I was like that crack addict. Spazzed the hell out. And I analyzed, I analyzed my situation when I was in jail for two days, day and night. And I knew that the problem was my party. I knew that my coworkers, which by then had become my, uh, some of my closest friends, were my biggest influence. So how do I get out of this mess? It's such a deep hole. How could I possibly climb out of this one? Well, let me tell you something. There's a light at the end of that tunnel. So I did what any 29-year-old would do, and I ran away from my problem. A few 300 miles away, actually, going east. At 29, I emailed my resignation letter to my boss, letting him know I was quitting. My coworkers advised me that it was a mistake, that I would never, that I would never make the same amount of money or more, and that I'd never find a better company than legal.xyz. But to be honest, I didn't care anymore. I just wanted to be happy, and I wanted to be close to my son. So I finished my two weeks at legal.xyz, and 